Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. 2021 Jeju Forum. I am Choi Song Yee, the MC of the session titled Africa's Digital Innovation in Post COVID 19 Era. We're going to start the session. Before we start the session, I would like to invite Mr. Yeonggi, the president of the Korea Africa Foundation, for opening remarks. Please welcome him with a big round of applause. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Nice to meet with you. Zaid. Commissioner for Infrastructure and Energy of the African Union, Mr. Kyung Seok Go, Director General of the African and Middle Eastern Affairs Bureau of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of the Republic of Korea, Her Excellency Yasmin Amri Suet, Ambassador of the Embassy of Rwanda to the Republic of Korea, and His Excellency Ali Mohamed Magasi. Ambassador of the Embassy of the Federal Republic of Nigeria to the Republic of Korea and distinguished guests from Korea, Africa, and around the world who are attending this seminar. It is my great pleasure to welcome you all to this session titled Africa's Digital Innovation in Post-COVID-19 Era. Esteemed guests, and participants. In the fourth industrial revolution, the African continent is facing a turning point in new development. Although Africa's existing industry-based infrastructure is weak, the introduction and utilization of digital technology is becoming more active and prevalent. As the economy and business environments change, digital innovation provides new opportunities for African countries and has emerged as a major challenge to the African continent. Given that digital transformations such as fintech, mobile banking, etc., is becoming accelerated and widespread, consequent to the COVID-19 pandemic. According to the IMF report, Africa's internet penetration in the sub-Saharan Africa has grown tenfold since the early 2000s, as opposed to a mere threefold in the rest of the world. The Brookings Institute also reports that approximately 50% of global mobile money circulating in mobile finance is the presence in the African continent. And Africa will see the fastest growth in mobile finance through 2025. However, concerns over cybersecurity, digital governance, and data privacy protection are growing along with the rapid development of such brilliant digital technologies. The African Union's Digital Transformation Strategy for 2020 to 2030 presents its policy directions for each African country's regulations and systems to harmonize the country's divergence of different policy orientations. In addition, the African Continental Free Trade Agreement, AFCFTA, which has been implemented across the African continent since January 2021, this year, calls for streamlining the industry and commodity circulation through digital innovation. I am confident that digital innovation will play a key role in promoting active intra-trade initiatives within the African continent. Through today's seminar, I hope that the discussion on digital innovation 
would be meaningful not only to revitalize the African economy, but also to share the digital experience and environment between Korea and Africa, all to promote mutual development. Once again, I greatly appreciate your attendance in this session and would like to thank our esteemed speakers for sharing their insights. Thank you very much. 네, 감사합니다. Thank you for your remarks. Next, we have Ko Kyung Suk, Director General of Ministry of Foreign Affairs. He will deliver welcoming remarks. He is not attending in person. He is connected online. Good afternoon in, Ken in Korea. Uh, Your Excellency Amani Abu Jahid, African Union Commissioner for Infrastructure and Energy, and Your Excellency Ambassador Yo Eun Gi, President of the Korea Africa Foundation. And my dear uh, friends, ambassadors of African countries to Korea in Jeju Island, ladies and gentlemen, it is my great pleasure to welcome all of you joining us both on and offline to the Korea Africa Foundation session at the 2021 Jeju Forum entitled Africa's Digital Innovation in the Post-COVID-19 Era. Jeju Forum is one of the most prestigious regional multilateral dialogue for promoting peace and prosperity in Asia. I would like to thank Ambassador Yaun Gi and his team for taking part in the forum to organize this meaningful session uh, with the timely subject of discussion in this pandemic era. Indeed, COVID-19 has greatly impacted our lives. At the moment in time, no one can predict when the pandemic will come to an end. Yet one thing for sure is that COVID-19 has exp expedited the digital transition across the globe. My participation online together with the AU Commissioner and the other the participants evidently demonstrates this paradigm shift. In, resp in responding to this, Korea announced in July 2020, so-called Digital New Deal, to prepare for the digital transformation in the near future. More than $20 billion will be invested in key ICT areas such as a database, 5G network, education, and contact with industries. When it comes to digital innovation, we all know that Africa is reading the world. It is no exaggeration to say that Kenya is the world's first mobile phone-based money transfer service, M-PESA, has started the ICT revolution in Africa. In the area of financial technology, simply speaking, Kenya is more advanced than Korea. Half of the world's mobile money users are now from Africa. Rwanda's world's first national scale drone delivery services is also inspiring many countries to adopt such a system. The company Jeepline that started this service is recognized as one of the best inventions of 2018 by the Time magazine. A Cameroonian startup, Proma Greeks AI-based plant care platform is also greatly helping farmers to combat crop disease in a timely manner and has expanded to many African countries, including Cote d'Ivoire, Mali, and Senegal. As an IT powerhouse, Korea looks forward to enhancing cooperation with Africa in bringing about digital innovation. Our development cooperation with Africa is increasing, but it doesn't stop there. More and more Korean companies are entering African market. Samsung and LG are already popular electronic household brands in Africa. KT Corporation, one of the largest Korea telecom companies greatly contributed to building the ICT network in Rwanda and Gabon. Startups are also creating new opportunities. 
Stella, a Korea-based English mobile tutoring service, hired young Ugandans as English tutors via internet, and it has proved to be a big hit among Koreans who want to improve their English. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my wish to see many more Korean startups go to Africa and write success stories like the company Zipline in the near future. I hope that the Korea Africa Foundation plays an important role in boosting digital entrepreneurship, enhancing the connection between Korea and Africa. Last but not least, the Korean government is preparing to hold the fifth Korea Africa Forum this year in Seoul. Since 2006, the forum has played an instrument, instrumental role in enhancing partnership between Korea and Africa. We are now working in close consultation with the African Union, our co-host, to determine the date, agenda, and to draft the final document. I, I believe that today's discussion will help to set the tone in identifying specific areas of digital cooperation between Korea and Africa which can be reflected in the final document to be adop adopted at the upcoming forum in the latter half, the half of this year. Therefore, I look forward to any valuable ideas and insights out of today's discussion. I wish you all of us a good meeting. Thank you very much. Thank you. I will introduce moderator for today's session, Yi Chin Sang. Professor, he is teaching economics, international development and cooperation, and he is also director of the Institute of International Development and Cooperation, and he taught economics, and also he taught in Korean universities. He worked in Britain, Ethiopia, and Korea. He had been teaching for over 25 years. And he also wrote various researches and studies. And also, he is working as an advisor for the ministry. And he is interested in economics, international development, and in economics. In Glasgow University, he studied economics and also he got PhD in development economics from the University of Strathclyde, UK. Professor Yijin Sang, please. Do you hear me? Good afternoon. Thank you very much. Uh, MC for your kind introduction. First of all, thank you very much for inviting me to this meaningful session as a moderator. I would like to thank the organizer and all the staff who prepared for the session. In this session, we have one presenter and two panelists. We have about 50 minutes in total, but due to COVID-19, it will not be easy to ask questions from the floor, but the session is being aired through YouTube. So if you have questions or comments, please upload them on YouTube, then we will consider them and share them with the presenter and panelists. First of all, I would like to introduce the presenter today. From Global Policy House, we have Mrs. Micho Chivunga, the CEO of Global Policy House. Topic of the presentation is digital innovation, the key role of digital innovation in African free trade area. Uh, before, before that presentation, we have keynote speech, sorry, my misunderstanding. First of all, I would like to introduce the keynote speaker. Uh, 
Amani Abu Zaid, from the Commissioner for Infrastructure and Energy from the African Union Commission. Um, the President uh, of the uh, Korea Africa uh, Foundation, uh, distinguished uh, participants and representatives from uh, organizations and institutions. Uh, let me first express my uh, honor and pleasure to join you today to share a few ideas, uh, but uh, mostly to thank uh, the people and the government of Jeju for hosting this important uh, forum. Uh, dear all, we know that we have been going through, uh, all of us across the world, uh, very special times and uh, very challenging times as well. The COVID-19 has tested uh, our lifestyle, has tested the technology, has tested also our health uh, systems, uh, education systems, uh, science and technology, and so many uh, other things. Uh, but mostly, uh, uh, we can say that uh, COVID-19 uh, demonstrated uh, again and again how important digitalization uh, is uh, uh, for the, the way we connect, the way we learn, the way even we get treated, and the way we work. And now we do consider the uh, uh, digital and digitalization uh, more of a way of life. It's becoming a very important infrastructure. As a matter of fact, as many would say, digitalization is the infrastructure of the uh, 21st uh, century. Uh, this uh, comes at, uh, at also an important time in the life uh, and the work that we are doing, the African Union is doing in Africa. Because in 2020, uh, as, as a continent, uh, we did approve a digital transformation strategy for the whole continent, meaning for all countries. We are cognizant, of course, of the fact that maybe some African countries are not necessarily all at the same level of development when it comes to digitalization. Nevertheless, it is important uh, for us as a continent to move together towards a common, uh, uh, a common uh, goal, a common uh, direction using this fantastic uh, technology that is being uh, put uh, in, to our use and to our benefit when used well. Uh, it is also uh, happened, it's also important that in 2021, uh, earlier this year, in January, the African Free Trade Area has been operationalized and the first transaction uh, took place on the 4th of January 2021. As you know, Africa has charted for itself and operated a, a, a free trade area, probably the largest in the world. We're talking about 1.3 billion people and $3 trillion in, in terms of GDP. And it is, again, one of the major or what we call flagship projects of the uh, African uh, uh, continent to, uh, to benefit from, which is, you know, the African free trade area. Now, uh, again, the African uh, free trade area provides us with an opportunity to uh, also put in use this fantastic technology, which is, you know, all the, the, the digital uh, means to fast track and to implement, operationalize the, the, the free trade area, increase and accelerate the inter-Africa uh, and inter-Africa um, uh, transactions using this technology. So, as I said at the African Union Commission, we undertook a number of initiatives, one of which was the digital transformation, and uh, the, 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 uh, the second one is operationalized African uh, free trade area, but also we are working together with all our uh, uh, member states, all the African countries, to speed up the development of digital society and economy in Africa and establish an Africa digital single uh, market uh, uh, again to go together in that spirit of unity and of uh, one Africa and one free trade area so also a single uh, digital market. This includes, you know, the development of all sectoral digital strategies in health, in education, agriculture, e-commerce, postal services, 
as well as development of the Continental Data Policy Framework to create a common Africa data space and the digital ID uh, as well, uh, which is interoperable uh, across the continent and uh, uh, establishment of a harmonized regional and continental digital ID systems to create an enabling environment to facilitate the development of Africa's um, digital single market. Now, why is this or could this be important to the relationship uh, between uh, uh, Korea and, and Africa? As you know, Africa is made up of 55 countries and our purpose at the African Union is to is to create this unity in Africa and create this mega space, this large market uh, uh, with harmonized policies, so which provides you know, an economy of scale uh, for investors, for relations. It facilitates you know, the, uh, the work with, with the continent because instead of having 55 policies or uh, 55 regulations, there would be one harmonized one uh, and also as I said, a huge market that is beneficial both to, for, to the market itself, I mean, to us African, but also for those who are willing and uh, would, uh, would welcome or, uh, or would like to, uh, to invest uh, and work with, with Africa. Uh, uh, this, you know, is part of uh, uh, more uh, um, initiatives in that direction also to enable you know the digitalization one of them is uh, electricity which is necessary for digitalization and uh, again we launched earlier uh, in this month a single uh, african electricity market again in that direction of creating a, a large space for electricity projects and uh, harmonizing the policies regulations and enabling and fast tracking the implementation of the many projects in that uh, direction uh, uh, mr president uh, distinguished participants uh, ladies and uh, gentlemen i do not wish to be long but i what i would like to say is that Africa is taking long strides and bold actions uh, in, in, in making use of the opportunities, but also challenging uh, the times uh, uh, which we are going through to make sure that we provide a, 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 a more prosperous and uh, uh, peaceful uh, space for uh, for uh, all Africans and for all uh, uh, people living in, in Africa. And I'm saying this because I wanted also to recognize the importance of women when it comes to digitalization. And uh, uh, we want to make sure that women have their fair share when it comes to the development of their skills, uh, digital skills, of owning uh, uh, pro equipments or products that, uh, uh, that you know, uh, enable them to use uh, uh, digital means uh, and also to, uh, to train them in, in the so many ways to across the value chain, not just as users of this technology, but also as producers of, uh, uh, of, the, of the technology of apps and, 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 and softwares and, and, and so many uh, other aspects of digitalization in which they can use their creativity and their energy as well. Um, I know that the topic is one that is very important and it's important uh, because of, not only because of the times that we are living, but it's, it's the way of the future. Uh, having said that, uh, knowing that the digitalization opens up so many doors and provides so many opportunities, it is important also that there are uh, safeguards to be taken. There, there are uh, issues to look into to make sure that while we are using the technology, we are also making sure that it's trustworthy, that it's uh, safe for our children, for ourselves. Uh, so cybersecurity is an important uh, 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 component of our strategy in Africa. And uh, that is why we do have an, an African convention on cybersecurity, on data protection, to make sure, again, that while we enjoy the benefits of digital and digitalization, we at the same time are um, limiting and or 
uh, eliminating uh, threats uh, or dangers and to let and allow pe uh, people to enjoy uh, a safe and secure uh, digital, uh, digital space. I do look forward to hear from all of you, and uh, I, I'm one of those who are um, who believe in technology, who believe in breakthroughs, who believe in uh, harnessing the benefits of digital uh, transformation in all sectors. And we do have, as I said, a, a large number of projects per sector as well uh, uh, to digitalize these sectors across the continent. And I do have, I'm, I'm also very happy that. At, across Africa, uh, despite you know uh, uh, so many uh, issues that we do have in our countries, uh, still there are so many um, uh, beautiful success stories uh, to be told and breakthroughs uh, to be uh, uh, emulated and to learn from. Uh, I do look forward to uh, an interesting, interactive, uh, enriching forum. Uh, I'm sure you do as well. I wish you then um, fruitful discussions and uh, hope that these discussions would also uh, lead to specific recommendations that we can uh, use to, uh, to uh, advance the relations between Korea and Africa, uh, uh, not only in digital, but maybe in other, uh, in other areas as well. And uh, it would be, again, my pleasure to maybe uh, work uh, on these recommendations and work with all participants here to see uh, how much of these we can uh, do together. And uh, I wish you a very successful forum. Her, Her Excellency Amani Abu Zaid, uh, I think uh, uh, she uh, commented uh, why the digital transformation is so important for the future of African continent. And then the importance of uh, partnership between Korea and then Africa. Uh, shall I move on to the uh, main session? Uh, maybe uh, we can ask uh, Michelle Chibunga, who is the uh, CEO of Global Policy House. Uh, she will be uh, presenting about the digital innovation and its key role for uh, benefiting AFCFTA. Yeah, Michelle Chibunga, please. Are you Thank with you us? So Thank you so much. I hear me all right. I will just share my screen to begin with. One second. Yes, yeah, so we can see your screen. Fantastic. Thank you so much. Uh, I really want to take first the, the opportunity to thank the president, uh, the people of Jeju, and all the distinguished guests that are present with us today. It is a real pleasure and a real honor to be with you. Uh, and I would like to thank uh, uh, Madam Saeed as well for her excellent uh, uh, opening remarks uh, and keynote, which really will pick up uh, quite a lot of the, uh, the things I have to present with you today. So it is a real pleasure. Uh, it's nice to join you. I'm actually joining you from Dubai today, uh, even though the Global Policy House is really based in the United Kingdom and we focus on digital uh, innovation and emerging technologies um, provision. Uh, working across the world and supporting uh, emerging markets around digitalization and digital transformation. A real honor to have you. Today I want to just cover a little bit more around um, uh, digital innovation and, and what digital innovation actually means, especially uh, in regards to the uh, AFCFTA, the Continental Free Trade Area, that we've heard that has been covered a little bit earlier on. Uh, it is such an exciting time for Africa and generally for the world, uh, even despite the challenges I think we've had with COVID. So what does this actually mean in terms of the CFTA, you know, that we believe is being, you know, will really be powered uh, by technology and emerging technologies. Uh, obviously, this is a very transformational agenda, you know, for, for Africa as a whole. Uh, and we're really shifting with the Agenda 2063, where we are trying to create that uh, a single market, uh, you know, a single market that will create massive opportunities, growth opportunities, uh, and access to that intracontinental trade activity to happen. It is very exciting because, again, you know, we're, we're going to be encouraging that free movement of goods, people, and services across 
uh, African nations, but also opening up the doors uh, for Africa to operate and do business with the rest of the world, including in, in Korea, which is very, very exciting. I think that relationship is absolutely fundamental to the growth and the future of Africa. Uh, we have, you know, growing population across the, the continent of Africa. You know, we've expected about 2.5 billion people by 2050. So it's a very uh, a growing, fast-paced, dynamic continent with massive pot potentials for intra-regional African trade, uh, you know, opportunities to actually grow very prominent sectors, including healthcare, education, trade, business, manufacturing. So it is a very, very exciting time. But at the same time, we're also starting to see an emergence of using, you know, cutting edge technology, which is really helping to, to shift the paradigm a little bit. So we're moving away uh, uh, from, from the challenges that we had in the past, where we don't really have solutions to address uh, problems in crisis, problems in pandemics. Uh, and we are starting to see that technology is playing a critical role in our company is starting to actually explore the usage of data uh, and data-driven technologies to enable solutions to be produced and to enable solutions to support the continent as well, which is very, very exciting. And the ambition really is to be, make sure that in across the world and in Africa that we're driving economic diversification and we're ensuring that there's great transformation that is happening across the continent, ensuring we're not leaving people behind. So the free trade really, you know, our area is a fundamental shift for, for Africa as a whole. Uh, but we are, you know, have some challenges. I think these challenges as well can, can be addressed by, again, technologies as are addressed when we, we, as we move on, you know, but the issue around things like, you know, affordable, you know, and accessible, uh, internet connections and broadband is, is, is a critical area for, for the continent, especially if we are to leverage the opportunities that emerging technologies bring. Uh, we have to look at, you know, sort of uh, sorting out the problems around the infrastructure, both soft and hard infrastructure. We have to look at investment opportunities, especially investment into innovative technology, uh, investment into skills and uh, you know, skills building around uh, emerging technology is very critical for Africa. Then again, also, I think Madam Said picked up on this a little bit, you know, very more clear regulation uh, and, and regulation clarity, especially in the areas of um, uh, technology and new areas of emerging technology like cybersecurity, uh, a blockchain artificial intelligence, you know, what are the policy frameworks in place? Uh, what are the rules around data and the usage of data, the sharing of data, very, very important. And these are some of the challenges I think we need to, to look a little bit more closely. Then almost as significant is also the adoption rate of uh, emerging technologies, I think will also matter. You know, if we are to leverage the opportunities with these technologies, very important that we look at boosting adoption and boosting access uh, to these emerging technology tools that can enable Africa to move and enable the delivery of the uh, CFTA are uh, very, very important. Of course, we want to be able to tackle trade barriers and, and, and limit the barriers you know, to cross-border engagement, cross-border activity, which is very, very important for Africa's growth and for the world's growth. You know, and then again, something that is very, very uh, personal to me, and I'm very, very keen to see more liquidity flows across uh, African markets and more access to strong, uh, robust capital markets across the, the, the continent is very, very important. Uh, and, and ensuring that we can again build, you know, what, what I'm calling the data capital uh, uh, for the continent, you know, data, data is absolutely everything, I think, as we move ahead. And data has been that solution, you know, that answer that has helped the world to navigate uh, the pandemic, to navigate COVID, you know, with, with huge amounts of data sources and with the usage of technologies like machine learning, artificial intelligence, even blockchain, we can start to shift and start to predict much earlier on, you know, some of the challenges that might be coming uh, before they actually arrive. You know? So it's very, very important that we can look at data. Uh, and in Africa, again, we have to build data and ensure that we have access to, uh, you know, strong, well-managed data uh, repository systems that we can tap on. Uh, now, digital transformation. Uh, how we've seen digital transformation, how that fits in with the CFTA is really important. Uh, and digital transformation, I know people mostly think, you know, immediately it's kind of linked to just technologies, but it actually goes beyond just the technology. It's very, very important to think about it as a holistic offering 
uh, which includes, you know, an ecosystem, you know, organizations, industries, being able to digitalize, being able to take advantage of digitalization as a whole in order to impact, you know, change management, but also to leverage opportunities so that they can create those economies of scale so that they can introduce, you know, new ways of, of working, new processes and new systems and, you know, more efficient uh, ways of, of working, you know, which is very, very important. Uh, and, and digitalization or the creation of digital things, right, is, is, is typically, you know, the kind of first stage that you, you take within the digital transformation journey. But through that journey, which is a journey, you know, it's a journey you move from A to B and it takes necessary steps that you have to take every time you, you move. Uh, and it's very, very important that obviously digitization is playing a massive role, but within digitization as a whole, also very important to think about the, the you know, the culture, you know, what is needed to, to, to create a working environment uh, that will, will, will open up opportunities for, um, you know, for, for you to leverage technologies as a whole. So what's the story like in Africa? You know, it's very, very exciting. You can see I'm smiling, I'm excited. I am, you know, I'm, I'm very, very proud of what is happening on the continent. Like we've heard already earlier on, there's so much innovation already in Africa, even pre-COVID, there was quite a lot of innovation in places like Kenya, in Rwanda, in Ghana, in South Africa, you know, where we're seeing massive young people coming up with new innovations using, uh, you know, technologies like AI, 3D printing, uh, activity that is starting to happen uh, across the continent. Uh, lots of applications are being developed, you know, data applications are being uh, developed on the continent uh, to address some major challenges, uh, you know, that are being faced. It is really, really important, I think, you know, when we think about digital innovation in Africa and how we want to move forward, you know, we can take examples that we, 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 we have across the continent. Uh, you know, even during COVID, for example, Rwanda saw an increase in the number of mobile money transactions, for example. You know, in Rwanda, again, they were using drones to be able to ship medicines and food uh, to get uh, to get people because of the challenges with COVID. Uh, at the Global Policy House ourselves, we've been covering quite heavily, um, you know, central bank digital currency and the opportunities that digital currency presents. Uh, you know, and, and what that looks like in the context of Africa. So are we going to look at shifting the future of money? Are we going to be looking at uh, a digital currency and how we, we can maybe digitize access to money and, and digitize currency itself? What does that mean for the continent? Is that going to help with fueling activity with the CFTA? You know, governments of Ghana, Tanzania, Rwanda have all embraced digital innovation you know, using uh, drones, as I mentioned, and also countries like Kenya, of course, are very well known for the activities that they, they have with things like Impesa, uh, you know, for, for money movements, um, and also closing that digital divide that exists across the, the communities in Africa is also quite good to see. Um, there's a massive opportunities, I think, for, uh, for Korea and Africa to start engaging at the startup and entrepreneurship level, especially when you think about things like fintech, because you can share exciting, you know, new innovations and uh, new technologies that uh, the, the young people are working across the continent. And another exciting thing as well is also the emergence of lots of more women getting involved into the fintech ecosystem, you know, and, and, and they're doing a lot of uh, stuff around uh, creating products around insurance, products around, uh, you know, digital uh, financing, digital banking, which is very, very exciting. We need to see more women take part and more women to be creators uh, of these digital solutions, um, you know, in order for, for, for them to actually benefit as well. There's still a big uh, divide between, you know, women interacting within the STEM field, within the uh, digital innovation space. And we would like to see, encourage a lot more women to participate. And this comes with obviously the need to, to have uh, a wider education uh, program and digital skills program that is also specifically gender uh, you know, uh, focused. So mainstreaming gender and, in, and, in, 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 in making sure that you know, uh, women are also taking part is absolutely fundamental for Africa's future as well. But in terms of digital trans transformation, so the Global Policy House has really put together a little, uh, you know, overview in terms of looking at the really critical areas that we need to focus on uh, across the continent, but also when we are working across borders with our partners, uh, including Korea, and how we can have more sustainable uh, uh, development and growth on the continent. And, and these are just some of the areas that we need to focus on. 
obviously the digital transformation is already happening, has been happening for some time, but we must tap on that uh, absolutely now. We must work together. A collaboration is absolutely fundamental if we are all to achieve that we all want to, to, to achieve, including you know, our relationships and our goals to deliver that digital uh, uh, strategy that was talked about across the continent. We need partners, we need to work in collaboration and we need to ensure we have the right levels of investment. Investment is very, very important. If we don't have the right investments or those investments that we do get are not being channeled in the right uh, uh, places, then we're going to struggle in terms of delivery of even the CFTA. So it's very, very important that we, we, we anchor all this. And at the end of the day, you know, it's also about people you know, technology is an enabler. Technology is there to help, to facilitate, to achieve, to get to a certain point. Uh, but at the heart of it is important to invest in the human capital, in the human skills, uh, and provide that education and skills development in order for us to deliver what we want to deliver. And, and the culture within digital transformation, within a very strong digital tra transformation framework, it is very important to also have considerations around culture and how we approach culture. We need to have a shifting mindset where we're starting to look at the future with a more sustainable uh, angle, with more you know, uh, analysis around the issues of climate and green uh, development and ensuring that we're really looking at it from a more sustainable angle where we can encourage people and create economies of tomorrow that are strong and viable uh, as well is very important. And this all really is a formula that we can utilize to boost the CFTA and to encourage growth across the continent. The tools within the digital transformation frameworks would include emerging technologies like blockchain, AI, you know, and the cyber security that is required to protect and cyber proof uh, systems are also very important, but it also goes beyond and we need to look at it more holistically as presented here. Uh, at the Global Policy House, again, we've come up with, uh, with, with our own, you know, sort of framework around the sustainable and circular economy uh, perceptions that we have. It's very, very important, I think, as economies move ahead from, uh, from the COVID crisis, from the pandemic, and we start to think about building back much better, creating uh, joint collaborations and working together to create more sustainable economies. Uh, and we have tapped on technologies like blockchain as presented here and really try to evaluate through our research uh, and through our engagement with different uh, stakeholders around the world to establish actually what are the roles that blockchain can actually play, for example. You know, many people struggle to understand blockchain. You know, most people think blockchain is Bitcoin, it's cryptocurrency. Uh, actually, it goes way beyond uh, a, a cryptocurrency. You know, cryptocurrency and Bitcoin uh, is probably the only the first use cases of the technology. The underlying technology itself has massive potential. Uh, around you know, transforming sustainable cities and creating sustainable cities where we're starting to allow more you know, sustainable resource management and resource mobilization, which is very important again uh, for Africa's future. You know, we're talking about things like more adequate agricultural uh, and land usages, tapping on innovations like artificial intelligence and machine learning to build farming applications that can help better predictions around farming is very, very key you know, allowing for that smart recycling, dealing with um, financial inclusion that we've heard about, ensuring more people get access to capital and access to liquidity is very important. And all these uh, technologies can play that role to actually ensure a more faster way, a more efficient way, a more cost-effective way uh, for people to, to be able to access loans for them to create credit history for themselves, you know, for women to participate and be able to access finance. Women particularly struggle to access uh, uh, financing that they need to be able to run their business. And at Global Policy House, again, we're very, very keen to, to, to tackle that. And we have built applications that we want to be able to deploy to, to women so that they can, uh, they can uh, find uh, financing and also find educational material and tools that they can use to understand uh, this space. So how do we go about you know, tapping innovation uh, to build Africa's future? Uh, and these are just some of the areas that we think are really critical to focus on. And these are some of the recommendations that we would give the African Union uh, and, and to others to really focus quite heavily around these areas, including you know, ensuring that uh, soft uh, and hard infrastructure so that the, the Africa can be connected. You know, be more young Africans and more young African women can also have access to data and have access to connectivity. Uh, and we close the digital divide. We start to close the digital divide, which exists by providing the right uh, infrastructure in place. 
investments again i've covered already regulation i've covered intellectual property and access to ownership is absolutely important again technology will play a role you know to, to facilitate that blockchain can help with things like land rights you know access to to use uh, uh, tax collection for for governments you know ensuring that ownership rights belong to the right uh, owners of property land you know, value, digital assets that we're starting to see. Very, very important that we can focus on that. And of course, at the end of the day, these are new areas. You know, we're seeing new uh, emerging technologies come into the market really fast. Uh, we have to keep up with, you know, considering what regulations are appropriate. We don't want to stifle innovation. We don't want to stop innovation. We want to make sure there is the balanced regulation in place to protect consumers. But also at the same time, we don't want to, uh, you know, uh, put off innovators and, and, and get innovators to move from A to B uh, and, and lose that capital that we would have been able to, to untap from innovators because of stringent uh, regulations, you know, that are done out of, uh, um, you know, out of spread. Cybersecurity, again, has been covered quite heavily. Data has been covered, but also very, very important and almost to everybody's concerns, regardless of where you are in Korea, you know, in Japan, in London. Uh, in, in South Africa, in, in, in Kenya, wherever you are, at the heart of it, all of us as individuals care about privacy. You know, we care about our data and how our data is being used. So again, technology can play a very core cool role to actually start to, to, to move away from, you know, um, me being able to own my data, me being able to, to monetize my data. And, and I know where my data is, is being used and how it's being used and by who is very, very important. So the issue around privacy, within a digital economy is quite important and how we tackle that and ensure that there's a degree of privacy that people maintain, uh, even in this world of exciting digital innovations. And, and so how does it, you know, CFTA and, and you really kind of putting everything together, you know, what does it all mean? The continental free trade area, digital transformation, innovation, what does all this mean? I think putting it simply, this means growth, this means opportunity, this means resilience building, this means Africa moving forward, this means Korea moving forward, this means uh, collaboration across nations. It's an opportunity to actually tap on innovation, to tap on technology, you know, to tackle things like, you know, uh, non-tariff non barriers around trade, uh, encourage more trade, more digital trade, you know, digitizing documentations and paperwork so we can have faster trade, for example, utilizing blockchain, utilizing DLT, distributed ledger technology uh, systems to create data uh, uh, systems in place that we can use to, uh, to tackle things. Also opening up opportunity for better transparency across uh, systems is very, very important. You know, even with governments around the world, it's very important that we move towards a world where there's a bit more transparent you know, we can see more transparency, we can create more trust. You know, those two words are what really defines blockchain, for example. Trust, transparency, you know, the opportunity for auditability, the opportunity to look back into a technology or a ledger-based technology, which shows every transaction and the, you know, uh, action that's happening across the value chain is very, very valuable. And then to the consumer and the user and the individual, they want to be more reassured that what you are telling us is actually trustworthy. If you're saying to us, you know, the food that you bought from A, B, C, D comes from a farm in Kenya, you know, here are the health benefits of it. How do I know that, that that's true? How can I trust that that's true? You know, blockchain and other technologies can help with, you know, providing that provenance uh, of where that food is coming from and, and, and what it all means. But also it opens up an opportunity for small business. I am a big champion of small business. As an ambassador for the small business, uh, for the World Union of Small Businesses, we, you know, I'm very, very keen to see more small businesses uh, be better supported and technologies like, uh, you know, applications are being developed today. Even access to decentralized finance is going to help small businesses be able to get the, the um, you know, the resourcing and the support that they need. And Africa is made up of 80%, 70% of uh, our small businesses, right? You know, and, and they are really the engines of growth behind the economies in Africa. So we need to invest in small businesses. We need to make sure that they, they, they have the right support around, uh, around that. Again, blockchain, as I've highlighted here, plays a critical role and enables activity to happen cross-border between different uh, countries. For small businesses, it, it makes you know, processes much more efficient, more cost-effective because they don't have huge budgets in place, for example, to manage as compared to corporates and big uh, organizations. 
you know, cybersecurity, again, a very, very core area. And I know the African Union is very involved in this. And then also considering other aspects of digitalization and, and, and digitization, for example, data interoperability is very important. How do we ensure that we can share data in a secure and safe manner without compromising privacy is very, very important. How do we develop human capital and human resources so they can use these technologies? So for example, at Global Policy House, we're, we're helping to skill up people, young people, young women, you know, to be able to understand what is, tech, what is blockchain, what is AI, what is machine learning, what can I do with it? Can I do anything with it? Or can I use the tools that come out of it? Or can I build a tool you know, using these emerging technologies? Very, very important. And I think is the way forward. And, and finally, just to, to wrap up, we've, we've highlighted here, almost summarized everything I have been covering so far into one uh, uh, PowerPoint, where you can see here, these technologies all will play a critical role. It's not really about one technology. You know, you will hear a lot of comments around artificial intelligence, you hear comments around blockchain, but I think the power, you know, in terms of scalable uh, innovation and, uh, and, and building those economies of tomorrow uh, is really taking advantage of the convergence of some of these technology and bringing them together, right? Uh, infusing technology. Yes, and Michelle, uh, could you finish it within two minutes because we have a very limited yeah. time. No problem. So yes. I've got one more slide coming. Yes. Uh, yes, this, this really sums it, and I won't go into detail of it, but we're saying basically all the technologies, you put them together, uh, you're able to, to uh, get value out of it. Uh, and finally, my final slide, this is if you please feel free to call, connect with me should you have any further questions. Uh, we, we cover a number of things apart from the digital economy. Uh, we're also supporting businesses, access finance and capital through our investment uh, arm. And then we're also influencing and advising government, including the African Union and other governments around the world, government of Bermuda and other governments around the world on central bank digital currencies and central banks uh, around our policy work as well, apart from the digital economy. But all my details are here. It's been a real honor. Thank you very much for having me today. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you. I think what you presented uh, is a really well covered uh, um, very insightful information, which uh, uh, is very useful to understand how important the digital inform innovation will be for the uh, Africa continental free trade area. Uh, we have uh, two discussants, one from Chungwang University and then another person from uh, KISTI. Uh, we are going to give her maybe eight minutes each and uh, we'll have uh, some feedback from Michelle, and then uh, we'll have, a, uh, say, open discussion later on. So shall I give the floor to uh, Professor Kwon Hyogin? Are you with me? Yeah, the floor yeah. is yours. Yeah. Eight minutes, that. please. Uh, yeah. There. Thank you for the presentation of Michelle Chibunga. Digital innovation and the potential of Africa was well represented. Very innovation, like innovative opportunities are lying ahead of Africa. I agree with that. And digital transformational connection, cooperation, investment, and cultural resources usage were also represented, so I agree with her too. But there is lack of investment and there is a long way to go in terms of technology development. About 2.5 million people of Africa, they will be given opportunities of, of further developments. I, I'm on the same page. Up until now, humanity went through agricultural and industrial innovation and also moving towards uh, moved towards the service industry and advanced countries were developed. They developed very gradually, but at the moment, the humanity, the humanity need technology and have 
enough technologies in human to develop some certain area. It, but important is that there should be some market. And also we have to some willingness to revitalize market and it requires some procedures. Africa is very potential in terms of market. If we have some procedures and willingness, then we could help Africa advance into the service industry very fast. In the past, education system was lacking in developing countries that was pointed out as uh, challenges. And all of this was able is able to be overcame with technologies. Those uh, changes will could be adopted easily and smartphone and smart system is adopted. The most important thing is demand. The next important thing is production human resources and most of them can be addressed with investment. As Chibunga mentioned, Africa has high demand in agriculture education. So what we need is to find out some solutions. One of the solutions is that we have to get away from the existing industrial thought. We need to move towards the kind of service industry. It means that we need to acquire invest like capital first, that first, and then we need to acquire resources. In industrial era, it requires new technologies, but in terms, in the perspective of service, the demand of consumer needs to be figured out and the products needs to be designed based on that demand and acquire technologies for making it. And it needs to be invested by joint uh, partners. So I call this echo science. It is composed of ecosystem, platform, service, and strategies. These elements need to be considered and apply scientific methodologies. Here, the platform includes what was previously mentioned like FinTech, AI, big data, and blockchain. Most of the blockchain technologies will be included as platform. And as for ecosystem, we can use the existing ecosystem. If we don't have the existing ecosystem, we can create a new one. For economic development of Africa, they will need such um, eco science strategies. As for the agriculture industry in Africa, they had many challenges so far, but with the application of digital technology, the agricultural sector could achieve great growth. So they need to redesign the agriculture society or sector based on digital technology, and it will not be as costly as you may think. Most of the facilities can be reused but in order to achieve integration, you need to make a sophisticated digital platform. As an example, in the case of Korea, invested about 1 trillion won in overseas agricultural sector. Although it may get better as time goes by, but the reason for failure is that they approached agricultural sector from production perspectives. Agriculture industry is not just about production, but about technology, educational environment, and cooperation ecosystem in the local community. And agricultural sector has a lot of features of service industry. Agricultural product production is different from manufacturing factories. Agricultural products require a lot of efforts by people. So if they, if people do not understand these things, then they may face failure in agriculture industry development. In order to solve high cost issues, they may use digital technology to develop integrated platform. And for a company to make it make their ways to the overseas market, they need to establish a platform 
in the local country, but there have been no such companies so far in Korea. In conclusion, digital technology is surely bringing innovation to Africa. For Africa to seize the opportunity, they don't need to think that they're moving from agricultural through manufacturing to service industry. But in Korea, we were successful in manufacturing industry. But it's difficult for Korea to maintain the existing manufacturing industry without any value added uh, approaches. So we need to change our views and approach to the agricultural industry. We need to look at agricultural industry from service perspectives. This is possible because we have digital technology. We can use digital technology and design a new service-oriented agricultural sector. Then it will enable you to develop the African community with a lower cost and at higher speed. Thank you. Yeah, nice suggestion. Uh, he mentioned about the eco science, which is a very uh, sim symbolic in a sense that uh, maybe we have to uh, look at the digital uh, technology to other areas. Maybe I can give her another time uh, to uh, talk about in more detail uh, later. Uh, maybe we can ask uh, you, Mr. Yu Song Hoon, uh, to discuss about the presentation. Yes. Thank you. I prepared some slides. And most of the participants during the session all agree that COVID-19 has brought about a lot of opportunities to many people. And by utilizing digital technology, we have the opportunity to achieve further growth in Africa. That's what we have discussed the most during the session. I agree with all those comments. Technology is developed through two things. First one is demand pool. There have been a lot of discussion about the demand pool. In this regard, COVID-19 served as the increasing demand for uh, application of digital solutions. And I read an article related to digital disruption in Africa in the post-COVID era. And I felt that last January, South, we had a webinar with SIA. And I agree with most of the content. DLP, distributed ledger uh, technology, is the, the symbol of blockchain. If blockchain-based trade is facilitated, then, then the African continents will have uh, more opportunities. I agree with the environment, but what should we do to close the gap? There was a discussion at CNBC about this issue and how the African countries are going to reach consensus on that their plan in the mid to long term perspectives. And in the Korean African Foundation, I was asked to write an article about how we can promote cooperation between Africa and Korea. And regarding the cooperation between Korea and Africa, we could take a little bit different approach. As you may know very well, this time, Korea has been successfully responding to COVID-19. We call that uh, secret 3T, tracing, tracking, and treatment. In terms of these three aspects, Korea has strength. And this is because Korea was able to utilize the ICT capabilities. And how can Korea share such ca capabilities with Africa? This is the current status of Africa, which was already explained sufficiently by the previous presenter. Uh, African market has great potential and it is growing fastly. 
and the number of population that are expected to use the technology is over 600 million people and the data transaction amount will also increase further. As uh, Michelle Chibunga mentioned, the data usage will also grow greatly in Africa. Considering these situations, how are African countries and Korea cooperate with each other? I think that we may have bilateral cooperation, but we need to think more about the specific type of cooperation between Korea and Africa. Depending on the characteristics of the region, we can classify the African regions into these sub-regions. So they have all different level of development. So I have three indicators regarding the level of development. So I had these three evaluation indicators and analyzed the relevant data through cluster analysis. The cluster, under the cluster analysis, we group countries that have similar characteristics with each other. This is the result. Group A, B, C, D, E. My slide is so small, so it may be an inconvenient for you to read them, so I'll briefly explain ab about them. As for Group A, they belong to Central Africa, pretty low level of development. Group B has significant ICT capabilities and higher level of economic development. Yes. Like, uh, the north part and it's kind of spread. Group D, the nation in Group D was, uh, have very advanced te uh, technologies. And considering this Group D unit, we need to focus on cooperative strategies. And we have to do some like strategies depending on their regions. And there are some variables, GDP and GNI and HDI. And infrastructure is related to wireless, wire line and mobile penetration rate per household. And there is very big gap, like even 20 times differences in some part. So drawing some like cooperative cooperation and it could be meaningful for market, but it could it is likely to fail. So we need to take another and different approaches. So for a group A and B, uh, they have low uh, they social economic demand. So we have to focus on the uh, data uh, this delivery and we have to set some basis for delivering information for group A and B and for group C, it is in the kind of middle status and we uh, it has uh, a little bit developed environment for ICT. So education is important in this group. So we have to focus on education and cooperation. Group D and E, they have a little bit uh, advanced technologies. So we have to see some potential and we could take some market approaches in these groups. That is the reasonable way of thinking for cooperation with African countries. And as other people concentrated, if we do not understand African context, if we cannot uh, achieve anything. And what is required for the next? Investment is needed. Rather than just cooperation, investment need to be made to make development. In African context, investment need to be occurring and also it should uh, promote development. That is end of my discussion. They I think it is very interesting to see what he did uh quantitative analysis, uh, how we could approach African continent uh, and even uh, try to elaborate our cooperation. Uh, we heard two discussions. I think uh, uh, it is uh, quite reasonable if we ask uh, Michelle to share her views on two discussant uh, comments. Michelle, are you with us now? I am. I yeah. Uh, maybe I can give you a uh, maybe 30 minutes or so? 
Sure, absolutely. Thank you so much. Firstly, thank you to the discussion for the uh, feedback. Uh, I think 100% agree, really love the segmentation of the uh, different levels of development uh, for the countries. And that, that makes a very reasonable approach uh, in terms of looking at how do we uh, support the engagement, you know, the bilateral engagement, but also looking at it on an almost kind of uh, sub-regional level is very important and that the development level is very important because uh, each country in Africa is actually very uniquely different. Uh, and is at a very different uh, development stage. So very, very important to, to understand that. Uh, and, and also love the, dis, uh, the comments around uh, the education and the need for investment. That is absolutely critical uh, if we are actually going to be able to, to make some transformational um, changes. Uh, it is also important, I think, as uh, highlighted by colleagues, that you know, in order for us to actually see some measurable impact, that it is important uh, that we invest into the, um, the digital skills building, but also in, in the platform economy. So uh, this was refer we referenced at the first discussion to, you know, who mentioned the importance of platforms uh, and the importance of creating internal platforms. So we are in the plat what I call a platform in the token economy, actually. So if we're able and 100% agree, I think we're able to encourage uh, the development of uh, a local platform uh, scenario, I think, would be very beneficial for, for Africa in, in terms of even leveraging the technologies. The very strong recommendations, which I, I, I know we take back to the African Union, uh, around the collaboration, you know, be it at, at, at bilateral level, is important that uh, we, I, I would actually recommend that we, uh, beyond this uh, uh, conference, that we put in place a very clear roadmap uh, for cooperation and, and uh, collaboration in this area, especially around how you leverage uh, technology and what that looks like uh, building up on what has the quantitative, um, uh, qualitative research that's been done there around how to approach the relationship, you know, between Korea and, and, and Africa. And then also that will help to also signal, you know, what sort of investments uh, are required and then at what levels. Uh, we are also quite keen at Global Policy has to work with everybody to, to bring in an Africa-wide skills development uh, program, especially around emerging technologies and within that also ensuring that we have the gender uh, elements uh, covered and, and the women element covered as well. So 100% really agree and I thank the discussants for their, for their feedback, very strong feedback. All right, thank you very much. I think uh, we can spend hours to discuss our uh, funding. Uh, yeah, before we close, actually, we have about seven minutes to go. What I do uh, is uh, maybe I can ask the floor to have a very short comments from uh, Your Excellency from Nigeria, yes? Or, uh, oh, yes, yes, please. Yes, please. Uh, do you have a microphone? Okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, good evening, Your Excellencies. So um, to make it short, um, I'll just say two things. Um, as mentioned by the Michelle and the discussants, uh, the next stage of uh, cooperation between Korea and Africa I think is that of investment because what mm. is happening at the moment is trade mm. and the trade mm. is very well unbalanced because mm. it is from Korea to Africa mm. and uh, Africa doesn't seem to benefit much when why don't you see the camera <laughs> <laughs> so anyway so yes. I say it again um, I we need to see the uh, economic relationship of Korea, Africa to move from trade to investment because mm -hmm. Korea needs to invest in Africa. Right now, what they're doing is they're trading into Africa. There are a lot of Korean products in Africa. There are a lot of Korean contractors in Africa mm -hmm. and uh, we need to see the next stage. Mm -hmm. Now on the political side, there's a need for more access and connections Mm. between Africa and Korea, especially mm. for the African envoys that are in Korea. Oh, we, right. it, is, it is a known fact that uh, we have no uh, access and we have no connections uh, to be able to articulate and discuss with the government directly what our country's uh, 
really need. We take Korea as a very, very important uh, partner for the development of Africa. And uh, uh, thanks to Ambassador Leo, mm -hmm. we're uh, talking to the Korean Africa okay. Foundation, but a lot, a lot needs to be done more between the connection and communication between oh. and access for the African envoys okay. to the government of Korea and also the presence of Korean government to be seeing the mm. Korean president going to Africa and visiting mm. Africa will galvanize a lot of relationship in Africa. Thank you very okay, much. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, I think uh, <laughs> Ambassador from Egypt uh, is also very eager to say <laughs> if we do not give him time, then he cannot go back to Seoul. So I think it's better to give him maybe one and a half minutes, please. Less than one and a half minutes. I want to thank Pastor Leo. It was a great session. I think uh, building on what my Nigerian colleague said, I think uh, the, uh, the, whatever its investment is trade, I think we can engineer any financial package, but I think the most important thing is getting Korea engaged with Africa. All right. I like so much the classification of the countries and the segmentation. It's a very important first step to deal and engage. And I wanted to ask for your paper, please, if we can share please it. Please see the... Uh... Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if Mr. Yu's paper, we can share it either on the website of the forum or anything, which I think is a very important starting step in building the uh, strategy about Korea being involved with Africa. And I really appreciate, Mr. Liu, if you can continue on that and we start to build some concrete recommendations starting from there. But as uh, Ms. Michelle said, I like so much this classification was very important because we should take needs of all different uh, situations and how to deal with different uh, in the development and to also close the digi digital divide. You need to address all these segmentations. So thank you for a brilliant session and uh, we look forward for more deepening of uh, Korea's involvement in particular as a country at the edge of modern technology in uh, digitalization to benefit Africa and to benefit Korea as well. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Your Excellency. And I also want to uh, uh, mention that uh, Her Excellency from Rwanda, uh, she has been here from the beginning and uh, she has been <laughs> capturing many worlds, I think. Uh, I think before we finalize the session, I think uh, we can give the to the uh, ambassador here. Okay, yeah, Her Excellency is also have uh, some word to say. I don't know if the camera is seeing me, but anyways, uh, thank you. I think I'm remaining with 30 seconds. Mm -hmm. I saw my colleague with three minutes, one point three, so I guess <laughs> maybe seconds. I can give you. So I'll just say thank you. I think my colleagues said everything uh, that has to be said, and and like they said, it's interesting if we could have the paper. And I thank you so much, Ambassador Liu, for this step. And uh, I heard it's the first time that this session on Africa happens in Jeju. Uh, and I think it's already a big symbolic step and we look forward to this continuing. Thank you very much. Okay. Yes, please. <laughs> yeah. Yes, yeah. I think uh, 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 Ambassador Yer is going to give the final closing remark. Uh, thank you very much for your participation. And today's forum was very, uh, very brief, but uh, the discussions was very uh, intense. And uh, uh, there are a lot of uh, things that we have to do. And uh, also, uh, we have uh, we will have uh, another session for the similar uh, themes uh, for the uh, cooperation between Korea and African Union, and African countries. And especially, I thank thank uh, all the my colleagues from the African uh, countries, the ambassador uh, uh, Magashi and uh, Fami and the ambassador uh, Suet. Uh, even you are very busy, but uh, you can be present here for the, this uh, forum. I really appreciate your attendance of today's event, and I'll see you in Seoul again. And uh, we have more discussions in so. Uh, thank you, everybody, for uh, attending this uh, forum. Thank you very much. Have a good evening.
Thank you very much. Can you believe it or not? The stopwatch is, says we have 30 seconds left. <laughs> Thank you very much for your time. And uh, I hope that you will have a wonderful weekend. It is a Friday today. And then I appreciate about all the participants, as well as the uh, keynote speech, uh, speaker, as well as uh, uh, discussant. Uh, thank you very much. Bye-bye. We hope that we'll see you again in the near future. <laughs>